Okay, so now that we have that background on there, so we can kind of see how the colors of the antelope are going to stand out against that background. Um, one thing that I can definitely see is that I want to um, make the antelope, especially on this side of him, a lot warmer um, than what I have there right now. So I'm actually going to move to, just because I'm interested in trying it, in my number eight flat. So I'm going to start again by making a bit of a tan. I'm going to put, I'm going to kind of mix all three of my yellows because I want this to be nice and warm and um, a bit of a brighter color. I mean, you'll notice I'm making this a little bit brighter than what the actual, um, than what the actual picture is. And that's just my own personal likes. You know, I want it to be a little more um, warm than what the picture shows. So one thing that I've noticed is that he kind of has this bright area down the center of his nose. See, now here's where we're going to start getting into more of the detail stuff. And then I want to put some of this coming down this way over here. And don't be afraid to use quite a bit of paint because you want, um, you really want this guy to, to have some texture to him as well. So... I will be adding more and more paint as I go. Now here I'm coming and kind of coming around that edge there. And these are kind of some of his more sun-kissed areas is the way I'm looking at it here. Um, on his ear I'm going to kind of give him a bit more of a sunny outside of the ear. I want to have that good center area there that the antelope has. And then my sun is also really hitting up here. So I'm going to kind of do that. A little bit more of that in there where it hits his head. Now I'm going to go lighter, but I'm still going to keep it warm like that. I'm not going to go quite as cool as I did previously. And I'm going to start bringing his face down like this. Now you see um, how on the picture you can see how his hair is coming down this way. So that's kind of what I'm putting in there. And here he'll have hair coming down like this on this side. And the sun is still coming in here, touching his lip there. And you can see he's got a touch of it on the bottom lip as well. And some areas right in there. And then add a little bit more white. Just kind of touching that area there. And a little bit more white up there on his fluff. And kind of get some of that fluff in here on his ear. Because that's part of what's going to make that horn stand out too, is having that lighter color on his ear. Now I paint in a representational style. So it's, um, it's more uh, kind of like... Um, uh, it's like an impressionist sort of style and so I'm not trying to be super real hyper realistic with this because that's not the style that I'm going for I'm going for more of a like I say an impressionist sort of look with this guy I'm gonna add some of this over here where the Sun will be hitting that part of him Because the sun is coming like this and then goes past his face and hits that area of him. <clears throat> a lot of this is just 
when you're painting an animal, a lot of it is just your ability to really see the shades that are in that animal. And you just keep working on it until you're happy with it. So I'm going to kind of bring his lid over like that. I'm going to add a little bit of violet to some of my yellow and then a little bit of we'll put a touch of burnt sienna in there too to kind of make that darker color that more reddish tone so we're going to kind of come in here some of this little bit more reddish tone to them Now you'll notice on the antelope himself, he doesn't have much red, but I am adding some of that in just for color and warmth and, you know, just to kind of add some interest to him. Now I want to make it a little bit more brown, so I'm going to add in some green there. green and red together because that makes a nice darker brown you see the green will kind of take that um, the green will take some of that intensity out of the red because they're opposites on the color wheel so what you're doing is you're really um, you're uh, painting your opposites on the color wheel and that allows it to really uh, tone each other down Keeping in mind that there's this shadow from his horn that goes across here. So that's kind of what I'm doing there. Making sure that that shadow from his horn, where the sun would be hitting it, goes across there. I'm going to add a little bit of more dark to the inside of that ear. I'm going to add some dark to this ear. I'm going to have a bit of dark in here because that will help that neck stand out nicely going to add some over in here just to put that extra color in there and make sure that he's nice and dark and shadowy on that side. Now I want to add a little bit more violet to that just so that I keep his shadows cool. Like I said, I'm not putting too much detail into that area. Now. Above his eye here, he has quite a dark spot above his eye there. Um, but I want to make sure I capture. And I'm going to go and make this even a little bit darker. by adding some of that blue to it because I want this really dark spot above his eye to really stand out there and I'm actually going to use that over here as well for that dark spot above his eye
Kind of gonna go back to his horns here and put them back in over top of the background. Again with the dark on the on the shadow side. And then we're going to go a little lighter for the sunny side. Now you don't want to just be using like solid colors either. Like you want to, um, you know, the sun is hitting a little heavier there. So I'm going to leave that part lighter. Um, the sun's hitting heavier up there. So then I'm going to go back in and take kind of a darker color. Kind of between the two and kind of get in here a bit again and just make sure that I haven't taken out too much of the, of the dark. Now I'm going to put a little bit of this gray down into his face um, on some of these areas just to add some harmony. Why don't you take a moment as well and tell me in the comments what your favorite animal to paint is. My favorite animal to paint is actually, I really, really enjoy painting horses and donkeys, any kind of equine. They're kind of my, my go-to painting. Now I'm going to take some of this lighter gray here again. I'm going to go back down here and make sure that my... Now the reason I'm using a gray and not a pure white is because um, it wouldn't be a pure white in nature right here. It would be a shade of gray. Um, so I'm keeping it at a right around a 9 on my value scale so that it's quite light, but it's not super light. And then I'm just going to merge that into that more violet color there. But I'm also going to take a little bit of that darker gray and mix that into that violet as well. Because I, I want it to have some violet, but I don't want it to you know, be all purple. But I want it to kind of have that extra little violet in there. Now his eye does kind of come in here, which is something that wasn't really on my drawing. So that's where you got to kind of play with these a little bit too. And then he has this light above his eye as well. And that's a little bit lighter in there. I think I'm going to work on his eyes a little bit. Because I like to get the eyes looking quite nice fairly early on. So I'm actually going to go to this number four synthetic. And his eyes are kind of a, they're like a really 
dark brownish, um, kind of like a really dark brownish uh, black almost. So I'm going to go with some really dark brown here. And I'm just going to try to, well, try to add that in here. Now, um, where the light is hitting his eye, I'm going to go a little bit lighter. So I'm just kind of putting that in on the bottom, and then I'm going to put it in on this side here where his eye is, because that side is kind of in shadow over there. And then I'm going to take just a little bit of this gray and mix it in there just to lighten it up a little bit. The key is to change your tones a lot. Um, don't try and make exact same tones or anything, because if you're doing that, you're going to end up just making your painting look um, look like it's all just one solid color. And you don't really want to do that. You want to have um, multiple tones there. Now, right under his eye, he's actually got a bit of kind of like this gray here. Um, just in this area under his eye. It's almost like a uh, kind of like a shadow lid. So I'm going to pop that in there. And I'm going to have a little bit of the lighter stuff coming up right on this side of his eye as well. And then the dark there. Mixing in. And he's going to have some of this coming this way as well. And his eye does kind of go more down like this at the back. I'm going to get that in there with that gray and I'm just going to add a little bit of almost like what almost looks like eyelashes in there on that eye. Now I want to go in and I want to take my light color here again. I want to just make sure I have that catch light where I want it to be. That's what's going to make his eye look a little bit more three-dimensional. See how that eye is looking a lot more three-dimensional now? kind of like that. I am going to also go back to this darker color a little bit and just fix my edge there. Because antelope have very big eyes being that they're... Uh, an herbivore. They need to be able to see behind themselves. Mix in a bit more brown and just kind of add that in there. I'm going to shrink my catch light a little bit there. I'm going to add a bit of brown to that side. Yeah, I like that. So you can see how much more alive that made his eye. Um, <laughs> this is the kind of thing that I could play with forever. So I have to be a little careful not to overplay with it.
I'm going to take some of that dark while I've got it and just run it down this side of his face again. The next dark area that I'm going to work on is his nose. So I want to make some good, really dark. So I'm going to take this violet color like I was making before. And I'm going to add a little bit of red to that. Add a little bit of green to that. Just kind of make this nice dark gray. Really dark. I'm going to take that and I'm going to fill in his nostril area here. Because this is the darkest spot on his nose is these nostrils. And then you kind of have the top of that one over there as well. You're going to have a little bit of dark just on this side. And down the center he's almost got like a little dark gap there. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to add my dark back in along here. Where his mouth is. Now he really kind of comes down here and then it goes more straight back like this. So I'm going to fix that up a little bit because the shape was off. And that will affect things. So now I'm going to lighten that up just a bit. Not too much yet. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of get this area. Oh, see, I've made that too light now. I'm going to stay a little darker here. In here, above his nose, and kind of get that area and kind of this area under here where it's a little bit lighter but not super light yet. And coming out of that crack in the center. And down here, there's a bit of that. And right up along here, you kind of see a little bit of it. Then we're going to go into this lighter one. Maybe I did two of them lighter than that, though. This is where the light is really hitting on his nose. It's kind of hitting there, and it's really kind of hitting here above this nostril. And it kind of hits right in here. Those are the areas where your light is really hitting that nose. Now I'm going to go back into my dark dark and just go back into that nostril again. Make sure that that's really able to be seen. I need to make that a little bit darker. Okay, so that kind of fills in those areas of the nose. Now I'm going to go in with kind of a dark tan. So I'm going to take some of this here. Just add a little bit of that to it, I think. Kind of a dark tan to just kind of come here on his nose. And under his mouth. And then there's a lighter version of that. So I'm going to add a little bit of violet to it because it's in my shadow. It goes kind of right over here. And down here. And 
and a little bit of here. Then I need something a little bit darker even than that, more of a dark brown like that right here See, a lot of this is just about going back and forth changing your tones adding bits here and there until you're happy with what you've got Maybe constitute a little bit of that lighter color into that. You want to have this kind of coming around like this on his nose. Same thing there. I'm going to take some of these same gray colors from there and I'm going to actually use them in his antlers or in his horns because that allows you to get a little bit more uh, um, harmony in the painting. So if I'm using one color down there, I'm going to want to just make sure that I'm adding a little bit of it elsewhere so that I have some harmony. And I will be making those horns darker again. Um, it just, uh, like I say, it's back and forth and back and forth with your colors. And I want to add a little bit more brown to that here. Up this side of his nose. take some of this yellow I'm going to add it in to kind of make this yellowish tan Now, I'm actually going to go back in and make some more of this really light yellow here. use that to kind of come in here and fix up this area because he does have a lighter spot that kind of comes in here and this line here gets quite narrow the dark line so I want to make sure I have that in there and then I want to make sure I have his hair kind of coming down off his chin there And I'm going to bring that into this dark spot a little bit to kind of add a little more to 
like that. Notice how whenever I want to take some of the red out of my color, I add a little bit of green. And a lot of this is just going over and over and over the areas until you have the color patterns and everything that you really want in there. I'm going to add a little bit of this yellow up here. I'm going to take a little bit of that darker and put it right in there. He's got a bit of a dark spot on that cheek. And then I'm going to go back into my lighter one and take that back into it. See how I'm kind of using the brush too to put a little bit of texture in there? That's kind of also part of what I'm doing here now because this painting is so small it's hard to get the same amount of texture and stuff as I would on a larger painting this here kind of comes down with that darker color as well and like I say a lot of this is just looking at your picture and looking at your reference and trying to determine which colors go should go where and And the more layers you do, the more interesting some of your colors are going to look and things like that. Um, you add in just those little details and then you step back and you look at it and you can really see um, what you're looking at and see how the colors are affecting each other. And, I want to take some of that really dark and I want to make sure I have it up in here where that shadow is coming across from his horns because you want to make sure that you're not losing any of that. And 
and I'm going to take some of that dark and I'm going to really work on his horns here, get the shadows in there.
Now, as I have this guy painted here now, the one thing that I'm noticing is I think my background is too dark. I would like to um, actually just touch this up a little bit. So I think I want to go in and actually change my background a little bit. I want to brighten it up, make it a lighter blue um, with a little bit of violet in it. I just think it's a little too dark. I don't mind it being dark up in this corner, but I want the sunlight to be coming in behind him and shining onto him. So I really want to make a lighter blue coming through there. So I'm just going to clean up my palette a little bit and then we'll add that. Okay, so you can see I just kind of cleaned off my palette a little bit. Now I'm actually going to use for this one my half inch brush because I don't want to, I want to try and avoid getting into the, getting into my antelope this time because I am so far into it. So I'm going to make a nice light blue this time. And I'm going to start on this side here with more of a light blue coming in. Because this background is a little bit abstract, I'm still going to let some of that darker color underneath shine through. But I'm just going to add these streaks of the lighter color. Because I just feel like I need to have more of a lighter background for him to stand out better. I just feel like my painting got a little too um, dark and moody looking for what I was going for. <laughs> I was kind of going for more of a nice sunshiny, like early morning sunlight kind of thing. I'm going to take a little bit of violet and add it into that. Make a nice light violet to add over here as well. Because I do still want to keep this background cooler. But I'm also going to take my violet here. I'm going to kind of come right up to where he is here. So he really stands out from that background. Don't be afraid to do this to change your background or whatever when you're already far into the painting because it's, it's just paint. Paint and a board. So you can change it. There's nothing that says you have to leave it the way you had it. I'm kind of just meshing these or letting these kind of merge into each other over there because that's not a really important area. I'm going to take some of that and put it over here as well, some of the lighter color. Not as much, but a little bit. See how much more he pops off there? 
And I'm going to go back to a little bit more blue. Over here. You see there, I did go into him a little bit, so I am going to have a little bit of fixing up to do, but that's all right. Do you see how much nicer and brighter that is? I don't know. I like it better. And let me know in the comments whether you like the first background or this one better, but I certainly like this one better. Now I'm going to go and take my little brush again here. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make some more dark color. I'm just going to make sure I have that fine edge of that horn really standing out there. Okay, continuing on with just making sure that my darks are the dark that I want them and that the lines are straight. And I think I'm going to actually call that complete because I'm really happy with that. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned to my channel as I will be posting more animal videos and also uh, more videos on painting other subjects. So have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.